Zero Ten is one of the most important exhibitions in the history of 20th century art, largely through one photograph that's been known to us for 100 years. And that's the photograph of the room of Malevich paintings hung uh, in a salon style. And it was rumored to be the battle between Malevich and Tatlin, who had been friends at one point and then went on divergent paths. The catalog originally for the show uh, doesn't give you very much evidence as to what was in the show. There were 14 artists altogether. Half of them were women. Uh, so you have seven women and seven men, and that is completely unique in the history of 20th century art. Finding out what was actually in the show was always a dream of mine because it's one of those things that's almost nearly impossible. There's very little information to go on. Uh, it's a, a reason that the exhibition is called Auf der Suche, the search, because this journey of putting a show together really was uh, a search, a journey, uh, a series of interviewing people. Uh, I have to say, I dedicated the show to a uh, uh, historian, Anatoly Strigolev, who died, tra well, it's not tragic, he was 96 years old, I believe, but he taught me so much about what he had learned in his lifetime uh, about the exhibition, and he still had questions. And so I followed up on his questions, on my own questions, and talked to a lot of people. There were a lot of diverging points of view. And uh, the thing is that the other artists in the exhibition, some of whom are very well known and some of whom aren't known well at all, all participated in some key way in this show. So it wasn't just about Malevich and Tatlin. Uh, it was about Ivan Puni and, and his wife, uh, Oksana Bogoslavskaya, uh, Zinya, Punka, as they called her. Uh, and they were the curators and the sponsors of the exhibition. And their goal was to unify the factions that were competing against one another. Uh, and that was a very noble goal at the time because it's hard for us to understand today that the ideological conflict that existed at the time was, was really serious. Uh, they were, the art world was a smaller place uh, there was a big stake in the game. It was the beginning of modernism, uh, and modernism was going in two directions. Uh, the, the part that was influenced by French art, and in Russia, the part that was inherently Russian. Uh, vaguely representational art, and art that was non-representational. Uh, and eventually, all of these artists became non-representational artists, uh, and worked in the revolution, uh, making street art, painting the sides of trains, painting the sides of buildings. Um, but this show is where all that conflict came into play. M Moscow versus St. Petersburg. Uh, there's this competition between the two cities that exists today. Uh, and finding out the anecdotes and being able to retell them is part of the joy of this exhibition um, because some of it is really kind of funny. You know, the, the uh, St. Petersburg artists at the last minute decided to hide all the pieces from Moscow so they couldn't be hung. And it was only at the last minute that Tatlin was able to find them uh, and install them. So he acted as kind of the art installer. And then an hour before the show opens, he starts making his work. He comes with a few reliefs that are ready. The rest of it is made on site as this very distinguished woman, Mrs. Bogoslavskaya, Mrs. Puni, is greeting her visitors. Uh, to what she feels is going to be a very elegant show. And there's this guy up on a ladder making these things with string, wood, tin, uh, causing a spectacle. So uh, the other point about Zero Ten that I think is a discovery is it, it wasn't a unifying concept. It was a clash of concepts. Uh, it wasn't the last exhibition of Futurist Painting because there were several others in 1916. Uh, and it wasn't just an exhibition of painting, but it was the confusion between painting, sculpture, relief. Uh, so you find all of these things mixed together. Uh, and the diversity of this show is perhaps its greatest legacy that you had for this one moment in time, all of these different approaches happening at once in one place in the, in the course of one month 
uh, despite the critical outrage that the show caused, there were over 6,000 visitors to the exhibition. In 1915 and 1916, 6,000 visitors to a one-month show was a blockbuster. And that was a great reason to do it.